So I decided that I'm going to make this video on buying tickets and how you need to go about that for K-pop events. Let's do this. Hello, 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 this is Ashley, and you guys are watching Ashley D Reactions, and today I am here to give you some advice and some tips on buying tickets for K-pop events. And I mean, I have some advice to give you guys. There were a bunch of you who have been asking me questions about how I end up going to events and if there's any tips that I have. So I figured I would make this video. And considering that there's some events that are coming up and coming soon, I figured now was a great time for me to go ahead and post this. So let's do this. Before I jump into this, I do want to preface this by saying that while I do have some tips and advice and things that I know, I am by no means an expert. I've only been into K-pop for less than a year at this point, but I have gone to a number of events. I've gone to see GOT7's Fly Tour, I've seen Chinese Fan Meet in Dallas, I've gone to KCON, and I've also seen GOT7 and their, at their Fan Meet in Toronto. So I do have a little bit experience, but I mean, there's definitely people that'll know a whole lot more and who've done this for way longer that might be able to help you out a little bit more. But I figured I would share what I do know just since I get asked these questions. So yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. So I broke this down and there are different elements that I wanna talk about. So the very first thing when it comes to getting tickets and deciding what you wanna do, the first thing you need to do is decide what your personal limits are. And when I say what your personal limits are, I mean, how far are you willing to travel for an event? Are you only gonna stay within your city, your state, your country, your continent? Does it not matter at all? That's the first thing that you need to decide because travel is incredibly important. If you're only gonna be staying within your city, then you're only gonna to have to worry about getting to your city, which limited cost at most. But if you're saying, screw that, I'm gonna go fly all the way to a different country to go see them, then things start to change and you have to factor in other elements. This deciding what your limit is, is extremely important, especially as we move into step number two. Step number two is the most important step. Well, one of the most important steps, and that is to save your money. If you want to go see these events, you have to have money saved. You need money for the ticket and you need money to get there at the absolute bare minimum. And depending on how far away you're going, you're going to need extra money as well. And the thing is, if you can't even buy the ticket, there's no point in doing anything else. And if you can buy the ticket, but you can't afford to get to where the actual event is happening, again, there's no point in doing it. So you need to be able to have money to do both things. And that's where, that's why it's important to know exactly how far you're willing to go to see these events. So if you can afford a $250 ticket, but you can't afford the $250 to get yourself there. So that's a total of 500. If you can't afford that, then maybe you can't do that. So deciding your limits and saving is extremely important. And keep in mind that when I say that you need money for the ticket and for the actual travel, that is bare minimum because chances are you're gonna need extra money because one, there's gonna be taxes that are added onto the ticket. And also if you're traveling, especially if you're going further away, you'll probably need like a hotel, you'll need to eat. There are other things that come up and deposits that need to be put down and waves and holds and all sorts of things. So just because you have enough for just the ticket and the travel, you may still need to have extra money on top of that. Number three. Once you've decided how far you're gonna go and you've started saving, you need to keep an eye out on your favorite group's schedules. So before they even announce things, you can kind of get an idea of if something is gonna go on. You'll see gaps in schedules, you'll see things that are oddly open, Keep an eye out for that. Also look to see when was the last time they did something? What were the trends that they were going on before? 
This will give you an idea of when something might be going on. Obviously it's not surefire, but it can give you an idea. If a group already has a whole bunch of schedules somewhere else, obviously they're not going to be coming to you likely in that time period, especially if it's a bigger event like a concert, and especially if it's over here in the U.S. You're usually going to have a little bit extra time. One thing to really look for is when you see that a comeback is happening. After a comeback happens, usually there's going to be uh, all the events of the comeback that are going on, and then there's usually going to be a few events that are going to be over in Asia. But once those are done, you're, it's, there's a good chance that you're going to start to see them going to other places. And when you see that, that is your opportunity. So look for comebacks and then start looking for things that are happening between like around six weeks to two months after that, because if they're not busy, there's a chance that something could be going on. At the very least, when you see that a comeback is coming, it is best to start doubling down on saving because the chances of you seeing them get a little bit higher. Step number four, keep an eye out for ticket information. By this, I mean make sure that you follow the major promoters that are in your region. So I know that there's a whole bunch of different places that do it in the U.S. I know I've done things through Sub K, I've done through KCON, K-Pop Me, and Powerhouse, and there are also a couple others that I also am subscribed to, like Jazzy Group and a few others, that I keep on my radar at all times just because you never know when something is going to drop. And make sure that you don't sleep on it because once things are announced, sometimes they can move extremely quickly. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping your ear to the ground for these promotion groups from your actual favorite groups. And I usually like to monitor a couple other places as well to get information. Usually it's not best to rely on like ticketing sites, just because ticketing sites usually get their information for these K-pop events at the very last moment, and I mean very last, sometimes days, sometimes right up to like a couple days before. So don't rely on that, but keep your ears to the ground in other ways. Number five, once a venue is announced, you need to go in and get as much information as possible. It is not uncommon for information to trickle out slowly or at the last minute with these K-pop events. Sometimes you are given plenty of heads up, sometimes you're not given as much. But either way, this is the point in time when you need to really decide at that moment, do you have enough to save? By the time that the tickets go on sale, can you scrunch up a little bit of extra money? Will you be able to make it work? This is the time when you have to start deciding. It can be extremely nerve wracking. I know I start to get serious anxiety when all of this goes on, but it's best if you just take in all the information and just look at the hard numbers and what you're actually able to do. Can you get the days off? Can you not get the days off? Can you, if you're still in school, can you skip school? Are you gonna have big projects? Can you actually get there feasibly? And can you afford it? Number six, when it comes time to getting your actual tickets, be ready. I suggest that regardless of whether you're planning to get the top tier tickets or not, that you be in the queue with everybody else trying to get your tickets right at the same time because you don't know how fast things are gonna sell out. These events can sell out within hours, within minutes. And when they do, then if you're not in there with everybody else, then you're just gonna be out of luck. So you really need to be prepared no matter what tier you're gonna get. Even if you're gonna get the lowest tier possible, get in there, get your ticket as fast as possible. That way you know for certain you have your ticket. When it comes to ticketing, ticketing is generally done based on the venue. So whatever the venue is contracted to use, that is the ticketing program that they are going to use unless there's a special certain situation. Also, sometimes the whatever the promoting group is, they may have reserved tickets as well. They might be doing something like that. That's how I got tickets through K-Pop Me, I did it through the pre-sale and got it directly from K-Pop Me rather than through the Massey Hall site ticketing that they used. So you have to always be aware of that as well, but be ready to use whatever ticketing system the venue 
is using. But if the promoting group says that they will be using a different ticketing system, then stick with whatever they say. So personally, I have had experience buying tickets through Ticketmaster, Access, and also, like I mentioned before, directly through the promoting company. So I've gone through three different routes. Let me start by mentioning Ticketmaster because this is Ticketmaster is the most loved and reliable ticketing site that is out there. Personally, Ticketmaster gives me the most anxiety. And that is simply because with Ticketmaster, despite tickets going on sale at say 12 noon, sometimes the best tickets that you might be shooting for aren't actually released until say 1245. So you may be in line right at the very beginning trying to get tickets, but they're not actually released yet for the best ones yet. And there's no way to know if they're going to do that or not, because sometimes they do release the best tickets right away. And it's really a crapshoot and there's really no way of knowing what you're going to get. And that personally for me frustrates me. I know when I went to KCON, I was in there immediately. The best tickets that were coming up were for P2. I purchased a P2 seated because I kept, pu kept pulling P2 seated, even though I wanted GA. I purchased that after 10 minutes and then I kept searching, I kept searching, and then I finally found a P2 general admission about 15, 20 minutes in. I purchased that and then I refunded the seated one, but there were still no P1s, which was what I was actually aiming for. And it turned out that about 45 minutes to about an hour into the sale, that's when the P1s were released. So there's really no way to know what you're gonna get, what the best thing is to get. And it's kind of frustrating with Ticketmaster for that reason. Also, bots tend to snatch things up rather quickly with Ticketmaster. As for tips of best bets, I generally run with both both a computer and the app running. And um, they say not to use multiple browsers. I did do it when I've, I've done it in the past, but they do say that it could potentially lock you out. Um, so it's really up to you. So yeah, that best bet for you. You can try it. The other major ticketing system that I've used a couple of times is Axis. And a lot of people don't like Axis because the way it works is you are put into a waiting room. And then once you are finally in line and selected, you can then go in and buy your tickets. Personally, I don't mind this. Um, I've, it's never taken me more than about two minutes to get in. Um, and I've always been able to select the tickets that I've wanted. Um, the way I generally run it is I usually have a bunch of browsers open with access and you can minimize them. The windows actually change colors when you are finally let into the room. So I know immediately when one of my windows changes colors. And since I've already been able to input all the information, since you can do it ahead of time, all I have to do is select what ticket I want and then I'm flying through. It's never taken me more than like three minutes and it's really easy. The only other thing with Access though is that they tend to have e-tickets and they there's no real way to be able to know if, say, if you're buying a resale ticket, unless it's through like StubHub, if that ticket is actually legit. Because unfortunately, with those e-tickets, you can just email it and then anybody, whoever first gets there, so like one person can sell like five of the same exact ticket to five different people, and it's just whoever gets there first with that e-ticket would technically get those benefits. So that is the one shady thing about Axis, whereas Ticketmaster, um, if you want to sell somebody a ticket, like the e-ticket transfers automatically, but it's not that way with access, but access as a ticketing is fine. It's just resale that I get a little bit nervous with, with access. Um, I don't have any advice for Live Nation, although there are events that go through with Live Nation. Um, but yeah, those are, that's my little bit of advice about buying K-pop tickets. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave them down below. I am planning on making another video about advice on actually going to the events. This is more just like making sure that you get your tickets and everything. So yeah. If you like this video, please make sure you like it. If you'd like to see more reactions from me, more videos, more advice, go ahead and like the video, and I will see you guys next time. I'm out.